All right. So this is uh, Down the Big Road Blues by um, uh, an artist called Matty Delaney. to like the key of E, for instance, and, and you know, Texas blues is sort of my specialty um, because I, I based myself out of Austin and I really did study with all the guys in Texas. So I was, I was curious about how they developed, especially what came out of Austin, Texas. It's because it's a very unique sound um, that Stevie Ray and Jimmy Vaughn, uh, the Vaughn brothers in particular, but several other guitar players like Denny Freeman, Derek O'Brien, Bill Campbell, and maybe some guys that are less known, but um, help develop that style in that region. Um, and I think it's really interesting because, um, you know, a lot of times when we're doing a blues shuffle in the key of E, it's, you know, you know, 
know, you could just do that. It's a, sort of a swing style shuffle. That it's got a swing. You know, it's got to have the rhythm. But um, I think what happened a lot in um, in Austin is they were bringing a lot of Chicago guys down, and um, Muddy Waters was coming down, and all these guys that early Chess Records um, musicians were coming down, like Jimmy Rogers and. Pine Top Perkins was coming down, I think, um, all these guys from Chicago. And with Chicago blues, there's several parts on the guitars. If you listen to that early Chicago blues stuff, there's usually at least two guitar players and sometimes three. And they're playing different parts. So one guy will be playing this, you know, maybe following the bass line. And then another guy will be going like, doing triplets on like seventh chords or ninth chords, right? And maybe another guy might even be going like there might be three guitars and some of that stuff, which is really fascinating. So we used, we used to pick all the parts and, and um, when you play with another guitar player, you would take top or bottom or, you know, if there's three guitar players, it really helps if everybody knows that landscape so we can all play together without bumping into each other. But for a guy like, for instance, Stevie Ray, he was playing with a trio and was the only guitar player. And he took all those three parts and made them one, yeah. which is pretty cool. Like when you think about somebody that's going like. Yeah. So there's a lot going on. I mean, I'm hitting the, I'm, I'm walking that bass. I'm doing an upstroke and I'm hitting triplets in between. So you're actually taking those three parts. So. I always thought that was pretty cool about that yes. region of guitar. You know, my main guitar is a Fender Telecaster, and that's what I've been sort of a, a loyal Fender Telecaster player for 30 years. And that's my main guitar. And then um, some years ago, I, I've always really been enamored with the sound of nylon string guitar and Spanish guitar in particular. I've always played a lot of Latin styled instrumentals, even on my telly. And then eventually I did gravitate to getting a nylon string and, I, I, and a flamenco and uh, I took flamenco lessons and um, that sort of just turned my head around about guitar completely um, because uh, so much of the emphasis was on the right hand and I was always really interested in right hand techniques because even um, when I was you know, early in my career and, and following artists like Albert Collins and Clarence Gatemouth Brown they really worked the right hand, they didn't use picks, and um, I used to go to their shows and just watch their right hands. Because um, I was never like super fast with my left, so I thought, well, what can I do with my right? So when I took um, flamenco lessons, you know, there's all these, well, they've got a lot of classical techniques that they use, you know, stuff like that, you know. And, uh, you know, like uh, rolling right hand techniques, and then you've got, you know, stuff like, and I always thought that was really cool. So I actually took flamenco lessons, and, and flamenco is very difficult to play, um, especially for Westerners that didn't grow up with uh, the time signatures and the, and the things they play. You know, they, they play in different time signatures and stuff. Um, so it's, it's a little challenging, and, and it's a little foreign, but there was so much there that I could draw, um, like, parallels to blues music. Um, for instance... It's improvised music. It's music that's very passionate. Um, it follows sort of a storyline. And, you know, I really, f and, and, and a lot of times it's played in minor scales. So I found it was easy to sort of use, you know, you know, if you go into a flamenco or a, a minor kind of piece, you know, you can kind of do stuff like that, you know. You know, and then it's sort of just, Weaves together, so I, I found that really fascinating. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up in the seventies. I was a little kid in the seventies, um, and uh, the Stones were huge. At that time, it was sort of peak time for Mick and Keith and, uh, you know, 70s rock and roll, which was so popular 
not only on the airwaves, but in our house. I had three older brothers that played guitar. And my dad played guitar, although my dad played like traditional country and Irish music. And my brothers all played pretty heavy rock, like uh, Deep Purple and Zeppelin. And, uh, and then the Stones were on the radio, and, and all those songs um, were so big at that time. Um, so they were just there, and I was always really into the Stones. I just loved their songs. I loved their music. Um, and it wasn't until I was about 15, you know, later on in, in like the 80s, that um, I just discovered like the early Stones stuff. And then we, we actually turned into punk rockers is what happened, is we were punks, and we were really into the Clash and the Sex Pistols and everything that upset my mother. Uh, <laughs> I was in that boat with you. Yeah, 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 right, right, and um, rebellion and all that stuff, and um, and then somehow that journey led me to early British invasion music, and so I rediscovered the Stones again, but this time I rediscovered their early catalog when they were doing blues songs, um, and they were doing like Slim Harpo songs and Jimmy Reed and Muddy Waters and. We were reading books about them, and I was already playing guitar, and I already wanted to be a guitar player. Um, but then we started buying the Muddy Waters records, and we would listen to them next to the Stones records, like Manish Boy or I Want to Be Loved or something. And it was like it was so drastically different. It took me a while to even adjust my mind to what this music, what blues music was. But that's how I discovered blues. Thanks for watching the Vault Sessions. Every view and subscription we get it helps us buy guitars for kids. For every $100, you can buy a kid a guitar and 10 weeks of lessons. You're hired. Click here to subscribe. Click here to watch more Vault Sessions. And visit the website here. Perfect. To learn more about the Guitar for Kids program. I love it. I love it. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Nailed it. You got it. Yeah. <laughs>